We are going to be starting in Tinkercad today. It is a free browser-based software for 3D modeling. We're going to create a new design and open up a new work plane. To the side there are some basic shapes and we're going to be picking out the icosahedron which is the shape of a d20. d20 is really recognizable and just fun to make for anyone who's into gaming. We're going to resize it so that it's larger. I'm going to make it 75 just to make it easier. Change the color because red's a little harsh. That won't have any impact on its printing. Now we're going to start by changing the work plane, which will allow us to actually place the text directly onto each plane for every number. Dragging the text over, we're going to input the number 20 and make it hollow, which is whole, and then resize it. Now we need to dra drag that cone down and actually embed it into the shape. I went down minus one millimeter. Now to combine those, we group them and it actually will take away some of the icosahedron shape. I'm just gonna continue doing this for the rest of everything. Now we're using Fusion 360, which is really great modeling program as well. It is free and there is a browser version. I'll be using the software. We're going to open our file from Tinkercad of the icosahedron and we're going to be changing it from a mesh to a BREP and this will make it able to be edited on each plane. I open it up as a new component which makes it easier to see what we're doing and we're going to be creating a sketch on each triangle and then creating text on top of that. If you want a full rundown of every step I've done here, check out the Instructables. There's a link in the description. We're gonna be putting in our number 20 and changing some of the options, moving it around to where we want, and then also extruding it to put it into the actual D20 shape. This is the same principle that we just did in Tinkercad. This whole exercise is a way to start thinking of your projects three-dimensionally. Being able to break down a project into its components is critical for makers and creators. Often when you start becoming introduced to new mediums like sewing, 3D printing, and CAD software, there's a slight learning curve. Not all of these mediums always work in the way you expect, but with a little practice it becomes easier when you see the connection to another medium that seemed difficult in the past. I like to think of this as leveling up three-dimensionally. It's a great confidence booster and opens your work up to a higher level of creation. I picked a d20 because it's a familiar shape and if you love board games like I do, it's something you love. If you're coming directly from Fusion 360, you can go to Make and 3D Print and work out where you want it sent. I use Cura as my slicing. If you're using Tinkercad, you'll just want to open your STL file that you saved before with all of your numbers. Here you can see it from all angles and it's quite large, so we're going to need to resize it. To your left, there's some toolbars and we're going to put in 30 millimeters for the size. And it's going to uniformly scale it down. And then we're going to check and try to make sure that it lays flat. Right now, it's going to be on its point. So snap rotation and then lay flat are our options. You can see under here that you can see the number one, so that's the side it decided should lay flat for printing. If you want to check to make sure it really is, you can click the top and that arrow and see how it just snaps right back down. That means it's not going to print as if it were through the bottom of the printing bed. These settings I have in the Instructables and you can get that if you'd like, but try to use whatever has been working for you on your 3D printer. All printers are different, so I would suggest using what is in your manual first and seeing how that goes. We're going to then slice it and then take it over to our 3D printer.
This print took a little over 50 minutes in total. And all prints are going to take a lot longer than you anticipate. A lot of people who've never tried it assume things that are very large only take a fraction of the time. So be prepared to wait. It's well worth it and you'll learn a lot. And as this tech grows, it will get faster and faster. Now that we've been doing 3D printing, there's something else that we can do with the same STL file that we created in Tinkercad. We can bring it into a program called Papercura Designer. It is a wonderful program for making paper craft from models. I love it and it's super easy to do. You can see in the Instructables all the exact buttons I've pressed to create this design. It's very basic and you can edit and change things as you've created them. I highly suggest buying this program because it's not too expensive and then you can actually save as EPS and SVG files which are really great for using in vector programming and also laser cutting and other plotter machines. Now that we've printed out our paper craft, we're going to be using a hobby knife or an X-Acto across all of the straight lines. Now, that's going to cut out our design, but it's still going to leave us with all of the dotted lines. As soon as you have it out, take your same hobby knife and gently roll across all of those dotted lines. This is called scoring, and it will make all of the folding so much easier and much crisper. Now that you have that done, it's ready to start gluing. I use something that dries quick and I use a toothpick to add it down. You really don't need much glue on each side. Now remember, it's only five triangles to each side. Once you start doing it, it will really come together quickly. This takes less than five minutes to put together once you have it all cut out. The last parts that, that go together, those flaps, you don't want to fold those flaps too harshly or else they won't really connect on the inside. So with a little patience, you glue both of those down, insert the flaps, and just try to hold it down for about 30 seconds. The pressure of your whole hand holding the shape together is usually enough to get those last little flaps together. So now I'm going to be using everything I just learned with my paper craft and turning it into something else. I'm using a template from the Evil Mad Scientist, which is a link in the Instructables and I'll have in the description. Basically, it's the exact same shape we did with the paper craft, but put on all sides as in a seam allowance for when you're sewing. And you can cut this with a hobby knife. You can see I didn't have a good time at first, so I brought out my actual fabric scissors, which is always smart. I'll be cutting out 20 of this shape and then adding the numbers. Now that I have my 20 cut out, I'm gonna be using my vinyl cutter to make some heat transfer numbers. Remember to mirror your numbers if you're doing the same thing. You could also just use vinyl decal stickers or paints. All of that can work. Be careful when you're peeling off that you get everything and remember to take off the inside of numbers the same. Now you're going to heat each piece just a little, add down the number, heat that as well, and there you go. To be sewing each time. Just using some glue, I just put down some on each side and then press them together and let them dry.
Now I'm just using a pattern of 10 across and 5 attached to the top and bottom and sewing them all together. You can see in the Instructables how I've done this and how they did it on their bag tutorial. It's just slightly different because we're leaving just two panels open to the side and we're going to be filling that with polyfill before using a ladder stitch to close the whole thing together. Again, this is the first time I ever have done this and I know what I would do differently next time, but I think everyone should learn how to do something wrong and it's your mess, so you might as well own it. We've come a long way with this project. We've gone from Tinkercad and Fusion 360 to Cura to a 3D print, and then changing that into a paper craft, which is a shell of a 3D object. Then we've taken that into sewing and creating a plush toy that's fun to play with. Once you think of things and how they're constructed, the world opens up. Technology and hobbies that seemed too difficult to try are now much more approachable. I hope you've had fun and just keep rolling.